Alright guys, in today's video we are going to be having a very, very interesting conversation about these next generation consoles. We're going to be focusing on the specifications of these consoles because today Microsoft decided to reveal the full specifications of their next generation Xbox and in doing so they actually validated an insider who we have talked about here previously on the channel a few times before that individual is known as Tommy Fisher this is also the same individual who is claiming that the PlayStation 5 is in fact 13.3 T-flops in RDNA 2 architecture and yeah so there's a lot to go through here I want to start by first just relaying the information that Microsoft revealed about their next generation Xbox console and then I want to get into the conversation about why it seems likely now that the PlayStation 5 will in fact be 13.3 T-flops but it's still best not to buy into it 100% so we're kind of gonna have a hybrid video here where we have some official information but we also have to look back to some of the inside supposed inside information we got to see what lines up and what is still yet to be revealed so before going any further if you could do me a big favor make sure you hit the like button on the video really helps it out more than you know and make sure you hit the subscribe button as well but I'm gonna read a little bit here about what Microsoft revealed it says Microsoft is revealing the full specs for its Xbox Series X console today and it includes support for removable storage and much faster load times for games the software giant will be using a custom AMD Zen 2 CPU with 8 cores clocked at 3.8 GHz each, a custom AMD RDNA 2 GPU with 12 teraflops and 52 compute units locked at 1.825 GHz each. This is all based on a 7 nanometer process and includes 16 GB of GDDR6 RAM with a 1 terabyte custom NVMe SSD storage drive. Microsoft is using two main boards on this Xbox Series X compact design and the entire unit is cooled through air being pulled in from the bottom and pushed out at the top via a 130 millimeter fan. Developers will be using the overall 16 gigabytes of memory in two ways. There's 10 gigabytes for fast GPU optimal, optimal memory, 3.5 gigabytes for standard memory, and 2.5 gigabytes reserved by the OS. All of this power will include the ability to expand storage through one terabyte expansion cards at the rear of the console. With USB 3.2 external HDD support and a 4K Blu-ray drive, Microsoft is targeting overall performance at 4K 60 FPS up to 120 FPS. One of the most obvious improvements that Microsoft is demonstrating with the Xbox Series X today is load times. In one tech demo above, State of Decay 2 loads a full 40 seconds quicker on the Series X compared to the Xbox One X. That's a massive improvement over current consoles. And so there's a little bit more information here where they talk about Xbox Velocity Architecture that is designed to improve the integration between hardware and software for streaming of in-game assets. The result will be seen in large open world games where developers can use this system to create high fidelity environments and load dynamically using the processing power of uh, and SSD of the Xbox Series X. So very cool stuff there. If you are somebody who is excited for this console, it sounds like it's an absolute beast and Microsoft is really doing their, they've done their homework I should say when it comes to the development of their next generation console and they're going to make you know, 100% sure that they are not going to have any of the same problems that they had with the Xbox One and that is fantastic. But now this is where things in my opinion get very interesting because we see everything that's going on here with Microsoft and how aggressive they're being with just coming out here and talking about Xbox and the next generation and just being really, you know, aggressive about it. Sony's still being quiet, but that doesn't mean we don't have some very interesting information to go over in regards to the PS5 itself. Because, as I said, Tommy Fisher, who is a supposed insider, was actually validated today with this information that Microsoft ended up revealing. What Microsoft revealed here 
is exactly to the T what Tommy Fisher had to say about the Xbox Series X quite some time ago. I'm actually going to throw up some posts that this individual made that we did talk about before, but we need to be reminded of them now. The first post says that the Xbox Series X is 12.1 RDNA 2.0 uh, T-flops and that the PlayStation 5 is 13.3 RDNA 2.0 T-flops. You read it first here, folks. Now, what's interesting is it turns out that the Xbox Series X is in fact exactly 12.1 T-flops in RDNA 2. And on top of that, he put another post where he said that the Xbox Series X will have 52 active compute units clocked at 1.82 gigahertz, 12.1 T-flops. That is exactly what the Xbox Series X is. It has 52 active compute units and it's clocked at 1.82 gigahertz. And he says that the PlayStation 5 will have 52 active compute units clocked at 2.0 gigahertz, equaling 13.3 T-flops. So, as you can see, it has become just really, really, really easy to now buy in to the 13.3 T-flop PS5 rumor. Because I have to say that while I'm not going to sit here and claim that this is the truth, this is absolute proof, this is essentially confirmation that this is what we're going to see when the PlayStation 5 is revealed, because I'm not going to take it that far. I do understand that just because this individual is now validated in what they had to say about the Xbox Series X, that does not mean they are validated in what they said about the PlayStation 5. However, it really does make you want to believe that what they're saying about the PlayStation 5 is in fact correct. At the very least, we do know that they had accurate information, one, like completely 100% to the T accurate information when it comes to the next generation Xbox. So at this point, it makes you really want to believe that their information about the PlayStation 5 is just as accurate, right? I want to say this, but I'm not going to because I won't say anything until Sony reveals it themselves. I just want to say that as somebody who has been entertaining the idea of a 13.3 teraflop PlayStation 5 on my channel here for quite some time, it's hard not to feel like I want to push back a little bit on all the people who literally, you know, there's there are people who said, I'm skeptical, I don't know about that, and I think you're wrong on this one, and that's fine. But then there are people who would literally make fun of me, people who would just pretty much trash talk me and call me names. Well, you know what? I really hope for your sake, for all of the individuals who had all of this toxic stuff to say about me and, and the idea that I entertained this notion and this rumor and this leak, well, I hope for your sake that this person ends up being wrong about the PS5 because if not, you're going to look pretty bad. And I'm going to look pretty good for actually entertaining this because as I've said before, while there are a lot of people who do make stuff up, there are also those who do not make stuff up and are actual insiders and are actually trying to give us information ahead of time. And it seems that Tommy Fisher is one of these individuals. Now, one thing I do need to mention here is the possibility that this could be some type of radical Xbox fanboy that has somehow gained access to the information or the specifications, I should say, ahead of time of the Xbox Series X and then decided that they're going to do some kind of insane troll on the PlayStation community by basically revealing the exact Xbox Series X specifications and then reveal, supposedly reveal, the PlayStation 5 specifications by making it seem like it's significantly more powerful just to get PlayStation fans all worked up, all excited, just so we end up looking really dumb at the end of the day for buying into it. And that right there is exactly why I am not going to buy into this 100%. I want it to be known that while I do feel much better about buying into the idea that it could be 13.3 T-flops, I'm not locking it in, not yet, because it might not be. There's also something else I did read, supposedly from another developer on a forum that was claiming that Sony was originally targeting 13.3 T-flops, but they couldn't make it work 
at uh, you know with 52 active compute units because the heating was just becoming a problem. They couldn't keep the console cool enough, and so they had to kind of like lower everything and, and bring stuff down somewhat to uh, to ensure that the console could be cooled efficiently. This would also explain the supposed lavish cooling system that Sony is reportedly trying to uh, incorporate into the PlayStation 5 based off of that Bloomberg article. And it's all starting to add up, guys. I uh, This developer also said that the PlayStation 5 will end up somewhere around 11.5 or 11.6 T-flops, which I could also see that as well. But what I'm ultimately trying to get at with this video, guys, is not only is it exciting to finally get the full specifications for the next generation Xbox, and it will be just as exciting to get the full specifications for the PlayStation 5, but as somebody who has seen tremendous amounts of pushback just because I have bought into the idea that okay maybe the PS5 could be more powerful than the Xbox Series X but at the very least as I've always said I believe these consoles will be so similar to one another that it's not going to matter as I said before it wouldn't matter if the PlayStation 5 was more powerful than the Xbox Series X it'll matter when it comes to bragging rights and pushing back against all the people who talked trash on me yeah Right, But ultimately, it's not going to matter because I've always had the firm belief that these consoles are going to be so similar to one another. But for those who doubted, here you go. Here you go. Tommy Fisher was validated today. Turns out his information about the Xbox Series X was not only correct, it was 100% correct. And so now we have to sit back and wait to hear what Sony has to say about the PS5. Maybe this person's right about the Xbox Series X, but they're wrong about the PS5. However, it would be really interesting if they end up being completely right about the PS5 as well. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Again, I thought that this would make for some very interesting conversation. We have Microsoft revealing the full specifications of their next generation console. And in doing so, they are indirectly validating a insider that we have been covering here for quite some time and so at this point i'm going to leave it over to you guys or hand it over to you guys leave your thoughts down below i'm going to be very interested to see what you guys have to say about this information again leave the video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and feel free to share this video out on top of all that but until next time guys take care